Um, okay, so welcome to the Jenkins UX SIG meeting for August 17th. Um, here, I'll just uh, clean this up a little bit. Um, I'll just put the link into the chat um, in case anyone doesn't have it. Um, so you feel free to add any topics that you want to go through to the chat. Um, we'll start with the first topic on here, security reviews for UX pull requests WEDIC. Yep, so the current status is pretty simple. I think we have three open pull requests at the moment or something like this. The other were reviewed before. Some bugs were found, but nothing really related to security issue this time, as far as I know. The two big ones are still waiting so for a more final version of the pull request before the real security audit done there. So from my point of view, at least, it seems to be pretty good at the moment. Okay. Right. So, so especially, one... Tim, Daniel, if you have some uh, inside thought about the process, feel free to have to say. Right. So, for example, in a fairly new PR around um, tool tips, uh, I'm sorry, not tool tips, um, the annotations on links on the Manage Jenkins page, what are they called? Badges. Badges, yeah, those badges. So um, as implemented, there would be an HTML injection vulnerability. Uh, if implementers are unaware of that, so but there's still ongoing discussion whether this should be string valued at all or whether we should only allow numbers. And if it's string valued, it can escape the value right there in core and say it's plain text valued. So either that way it works, but uh, yeah, this is something uh, that I brought up in review here. As far as I'm concerned, this pull request isn't far enough along to make a final determination, but this is one where reviewing it with an eye towards potential security issues wasn't uh, a bad idea. Yeah. Um, I haven't been putting the security review things on the really trivial ones, which I'm assuming is okay. There's things like removing a line of CSS, removing some links, um, just to skip some of that. Just an example is, uh, it's right. a user, not a label. Yes. Uh, yeah, I like remove the uplink. I haven't bothered, uh, and a couple of similar ones where people have just done minor CSS tweaks. Um, in terms of UX improvements, Jan, you've just joined. Welcome. Um, did you want to take over for that? We could go through any of the open pull requests or anything new that you've got. Um, yeah, I've not got anything major to show. Um, at least running locally, but we're good to for the active PRs. Um, I might have a quick prototype to demonstrate later. I just need to see kind of what state it's in right now. Um, I'll just do that kind of in the background. Cool. So, of the open PRs, we've got um, which one would you want to go through? Uh, so there's the up, well, first was the up page is the quite trivial one. Mm -hmm. um, sure. So yeah, it's very minor. Well, it's about replacing the up arrow on the people page, on the user configuration page here. So mm -hmm. replacing the up arrow with the people icon. 
Um, this one seems quite odd in general because I feel like in general it's not really an it's not really descended from the people page um, for most people accessing it. I don't, I don't know whether that I don't think people would actually we generally don't often don't want people accessing that page because um, it loads all the users um, and there's not really any need for general users to actually hit view that page ever I would say. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you've got any thoughts on that or whether you just want to change the icon to be the people icon. I'm I'm, I'm good either way really. Um, I think off the top of my head probably just replacing the icon makes makes the most sense. Um, like Daniel's comment said at the, at the bottom um, that seems seems sensible to me. Okay. Um, the breadcrumb one. Oops. What was that to do? Was that? Okay. Um, I think there's some. So just for context, um, what are we currently doing? Um, we're kind of just just having a look through to see if we can um, unblock or move along some of the open pull requests, unless anyone's got any other. Um, well, so I guess that's more this topic down here, stalled UX pull requests, if we could just review some of those quickly. Right, um, and, and then, I mean, there are certainly stalled pull requests, but I'm not sure how much sense it makes to uh, look at once that got updated 18 minutes ago with a new comment. Sure. Yeah, I, was, I had, I mean, I hadn't seen that one until then. Um, I think this one we had quite a lot of discussion on last time, but Jan wasn't here. There's been a bit of chat in Gitter, but it'd be good if we can find a way forward on this one. Um, so this is the one about moving the uh, icons to the sidebar and the search bar to the top and center with the title in the sidebar. Um, the last context in Gitter was about um, um, judging success for an experiment. And then Jan added a reply here about that. So I'm not sure how. Right. And I mean, uh, Jan responded, but I'm not sure whether it's an answer. Because if we're looking for user feedback, as an, as an unrelated example, we have seen extremely negative user feedback on the monochrome icons. So far, we don't give a shit. So, what's the what's the uh, meaning of user feedback for UI changes? I guess if we could kind of gather that feedback and kind of, I'm not sure that feedback we might might be on like issues. Jenkins, um, but if we could kind of categorize that and keep it in one place and um, kind of draw attention to it in some way, that'd be. Is that feedback, good. Daniel, specific to the OSS update, or does that include the CI? Um, I don't know whether what what feedback uh, CloudBees is getting from customers. Like where did uh, that where did that come from? Like just a ra random pull request comment. The, I mean, one. There, there, I there, there is feedback also on open source issues. And, and the thing that makes it uh, complicated, Christina, is that obviously yeah. CloudBees customers are aware that CloudBees CI is Jenkins plus some stuff. So it right. may as well be customers who right. are complaining through the open source channels, or it's just Jenkins open source users. We don't know, but it is coming. I am seeing yeah. it through open source channels. I don't know what uh, Cloud support and, and field it are seeing. It might be worth, like, do you ever do, 
and, and I guess this, sorry, Jan, it's nice to meet you. This is the first time I'm just the senior designer over here that works with CI. So I just attend to kind of be able to kind of get an ear on what's happening in the open source and how I can support it on the, on the Fabius side. Um, but anyways, do we have a process in place for um, generating issues or gener generating tasks that aren't necessarily development in nature, but that are more like, because I would kind of want to do a bit of a dig into maybe doing some customer research sessions and gather some info there to see where that type of feedback is coming from before we evaluate whether that's actually something that's worth acting on. Um, does that make any sense? Would that be useful? I, I, I think so, yeah. I nice think you as well. Oftentimes, like what people will say online, <laughs> it's very easy to complain. Because in customer sessions, I mean, of course, then this is a different user group, right? So it could be vastly different experiences and perceptions. But so far, the feedback has been quite positive. So I would just want to make sure that we're any any action that came from those like complaints right so um just just in case i i don't think we should be discussing the uh monochrome icons here it's just um coming from jan saying well if we get feedback in jira for example then we can adjust if the feedback is negative <clears throat> but uh and and i'm saying well there was this other change not too long ago where we got negative feedback and we're not acting on it so are we only selectively looking at the feedback and if there is no way that we provide where users can say i like this in addition to i don't like this because obviously people will uh complain if they don't like something and if they like something they will just accept it and move on exactly. um, do we ever and, do on page kind of you know you've seen them when they're on a page with a new feature they'll kind of get a a little poll or no, and that's something that i brought up um in gitter mm -hmm. uh we should have probably a feedback mechanism inside jenkins yeah that highlights new changes especially the experimental ones and says hey how do you like this is this good is this bad Take it's something, a button and it's something i'm prototyping like and pushing through in ci um so it's maybe something that we could you know make available to at least the process make available to the open source if they'd find it helpful because <coughs> It would be useful then to at least even be able to draw correlations between the type of, you know, the scale of user, just the, the, the type of users and who tend to have that feedback. Um, I think we'd want for just to vet any feedback, even whether it's icons or, or future work. So um if that would work, I can pass that kind of research along so that maybe it could be used in the open source. Right, that would be useful. Um, I don't think we have, do we have an internal channel for the for the UX work at Cloudbees just to make, then I could join, otherwise just- Not yet, uh, it's, it's okay. kind of formalized in our OKRs for, for me for tracking. Okay. Um, right, so- here um to remind me but otherwise I'll, I'll make a note of it and maybe follow up with mark maybe on how best to kind of cross pollinate makes sense so we have uh mechanisms in jenkins that can be used to for people to provide feedback or to send data to the Jenkins project on a very high level um, that we could hook into. Um, 
Although the problem there is that it is tied currently to the usage statistics feature, so that could be a bit of a mess. So we may need something completely new that we don't have yet in Jenkins. And obviously, if it is in Jenkins, it will also need to report to the Jenkins project. So the folks we should loop in there are like Damien, who's working on Jenkins project infrastructure. Okay. Um, and that can then be reused simply in, in Cloud-based products by simply being <clears throat> part of Jenkins and then also yeah. being part of uh, the products. So yeah, I, I think that would be very valuable. So even for something mm -hmm. like the icons, right? If, if, if what you're hearing is that people like it and I'm seeing the very vocal few who absolutely yeah. hate it. Well, and then, like you could see how you could start to, and this is why, like before I action anything, I would want to make sure that we're not kind of getting things in a vacuum because I may be in a vacuum of a certain type of user, right? And it doesn't mean that only they should be informing our decisions. Um, so we have to like make sure we're hearing everybody and find something in between. Uh, so this is a good. So I'll touch base with baby Damien. and mark awesome it's all for me okay so that would be useful for acting on feedback that we're all just getting more feedback mostly um but i guess so specifically in this pull request um i don't think i mean just because it's good to get feedback on these sort of changes but i think the main wasn't the main thing that was holding this up was it just the title or was there anything else holding this um pull request up when you say title what do you mean the title in the sidebar in the side panel was that well, I mean, the side panel is, oh, right. The title in the side panel was the one thing. And the other thing was the separator, <clears throat> which is, for example, currently not usable in anything that is extensible, right? So if we want to have the separator as part of what side panels can contain, we need a way to have that be part of the actionable interface, for example. So the side in the side panel is just showing a link to update center at the moment, right? Uh, I scrolled on a bit. I think there's a separate one that has everything. Uh, maybe the video, maybe. Probably not. No, maybe it's further down. can't see a picture but i'm pretty sure it's just a, a line that has a link to update center and right. yarn's planning to mostly get rid of that link later by inlining it into the t inlining the information into the table um the problem with i guess not having a separator is that these are um well i don't know i guess you could just put it in there these are almost kind of like they have tabs, whereas it's a different page, which is why it's separated. I mean, the explanation makes sense. It's just, it's this one place in Jenkins that's nowhere else, and it's not working with actionable and the existing extension mechanism, uh, and so on. So this isn't about the benefits of the specific thing, but how it integrates into Jenkins more generally. Jan, have you got any thoughts on it? Um, so yeah, like, like Tim said, this is kind of just a stopgap solution um, just so we can separate the kind of permanent items, I guess we can call them at the top. So we've got the active, the, the, the updates available, install and advanced. Um, so we can separate those visually from the update center. 
Um, as like Tim said, that'll take you to a separate page altogether. Um, in terms of kind of extending the API to support separators, I'm I'm happy to do that. Um, it's just whether other pages on Jenkins would benefit from having that separator. Um, yeah, because the goal is generally to shorten that sidebar rather than lengthen it. Way. Spot on, really. So probably wouldn't want to encourage other developers to start separating items, whereas we should be kind of trying to find better ways of, of exploring or, or sharing that kind of information. So another option how we could get uh, this effect without needing a separator could be to uh, to have uh, nested side panel items like we have for whiteboard workspace and we used to have for the uh, plain text log, which are basically, there's basically a, a tree of side panel items that exists in some places in Jenkins. So that way, uh, installed plugins, advanced settings could be shown as part of the, or available plugins can be shown as part of plugin manager, while the other top level item would be the update sender. No separator required because the tree structure makes it clear what's related. Um, I'm, I'm not sure it needs to be discussed in this meeting, no. Um, just just a thought if, if you want to move this uh, forward without uh, the separator. Although it would probably make sense for us to look into the feedback mechanism rather early because the more changes and the more experiments we publish without having a feedback mechanism, um, the worse the situation will be because why would anyone provide feedback on something they've been using for months? Yeah. Yeah. Um, any thoughts on what to do about the title, Jan? I think for, for this page, there isn't really a place to have the title really, even on the left side. Um, we have that kind of giant search bar in the center, um, just so it kind of gets the users kind of focused straight away. Um, see, I, I, I don't know, I, I can't think of a better spot for the title um but i've i've not really got an issue with it being on the on the left you know um but what, what do you guys think my only concern is that it would open up a can of worms <clears throat> for other pages so I, th I think, Jan, you weren't here. I think it was in the last meeting, right, where we already uh, discussed in quite some detail potential issues with having the title in the side panel. For example, the resulting length limitations, especially in more verbose languages, stuff like that. Uh, so for example, if we move the title into the side panel on all pages, what does it look like? on job pages where the job name is the page title and job names can be extremely long and very difficult to break because people like their word uh, separation using underscores, which are not really easily breakable with normal, normal rules and so on. So I don't want to reopen this particular can of worms. I just want to mention this was something that we discussed in some detail last time um where quite a few concerns exist with having the title in the side panel obviously on this page it's easy um but if if this is something that should be done more on more and more perhaps ultimately all pages of jenkins then these are problems we need to figure out an answer for mm -hmm. I, I I agree completely. Um, I I managed to watch the last meeting, um, and so I managed to capture all your points really. Um, and I responded on on the Gitter as well. I'm not sure if you had all seen. Um, so like like you, like you said, this this page it works with the head because plugins as a title isn't particularly long. Um, 
but yeah, for, for the job page and whatnot, if you have a kind of crazy job name, it it, it wouldn't handle it. Um, at least in this kind of current implementation. So it'd be worth looking at how we could kind of work around that or if there's a better way of, of doing it. Um, I think some pages have descriptions to associate the option, the ability to add a description as well, mm -hmm. right? So suddenly all the links start pushing down <laughs> potentially <laughs> below the fold. It could be that the plugin manager page is unique enough to stand alone within the sidebar with no problem. Um, but I would agree that like future pages, like it couldn't hurt to have further discussion. But that's just my two cents. My opinion is only worth that. <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind actually if we had the time today, potentially, um, just to go over a small prototype for the kind of project page. Um, it's pretty much like a wireframe at this point, but it's just an idea of kind of cards layout that we spoke about a few months back on the UX meetings. Um, but yep. sorry if there's time at this time. Yeah, we've got time for that. I think I guess the main thing here is just trying to work out a way forward on this pull request. Is this the um main one that's probably not too much, hopefully not too much work to unblock this one. Listen. Have you got enough to go away with Jan to figure out something or do we need to figure out page titles or? Um, so for the title, um, if, if we kind of class this page as, as being unique, like Christina said, um, then that, that could stand like it's, Compared to the rest of Jenkins, the plugin manager is, is quite a unique page. Um, it's more like a storefront than kind of managing builds or, or whatever. Um, so from that viewpoint, it could be seen as it kind of requiring a more unique layout. Um, and then for the separator, um, I, I have no issues with being, with being part of the API. Um, but I wouldn't want to encourage developers to actually use it unless there's a situation that kind of needs it, like where we have the update center being separated from the top four items. Yeah, I think it only makes sense on custom pages and do we need to bring that in? Okay, so how about this? We change all the labels of update center to plugin manager and call it the download progress page of the plugin manager and otherwise pretend it's the exact same thing. Yeah, that could work. It, it does come up in breadcrumbs as update center. We could either. Well, no, that you rename it. it. That, that's, that's the point. You can rename the label. Mm, you, yeah. you just make the label also plugin manager and call it the download progress page because that's basically what it is. Yeah, yeah. I think that's probably a nice solution. Mm -hmm. um, review what the API offers. However, both of these have APIs. And so that could be awkward having the download progress page, having an API that has little to do with downloads, but it I think it's the jobs, so it might actually work. So perhaps that would be a way forward. And then we, you don't need a separator because the plugin manager suddenly has a download progress page. Yeah, I think that works. Yeah, sounds good to me. And are you happy, Daniel, is that the title, for the title, this page is quite special? Um, I, I, I don't think happy time. is the word Are you choice okay I with would it? be going for. <laughs> Are you okay with it? I mean, at this point, it's just another page like all of them it, it, or another side panel like all of them, right? There's nothing special about this side panel compared to um, 
the job configuration. Right? Sure. As I explained, job configuration has a special side panel that is the like the, the what used to be the scroll spy on top. Um, and so it kind of made sense there, but now it's just a regular side panel. Why does this have? And if you scroll down, you will see how the side panel actually progresses through the different options, right? Uh, which is very different from the usual go to a different page side panel that other pages in Jenkins have. And so this kind of, I thought this signified this special kind of side panel as well. And now you apply this to plugin manager. Why, why does plugin manager have it, but not system log, for example, system log is also a sort of unique uh, page on manage Jenkins. Uh, why does this not have the title in the side panel? Right. Well, I and, think and for that page, it, it could potentially have the title in the side panel without too much issue. Then you, what, what would you do with the buttons then, I guess? I guess I'll just keep that kind of top pro kind of blank, I guess. Um, it'll, if I show that prototype later, you'll kind of have a similar kind of theme um, to that, how you have the controls on the right, but the kind of title on the left. Um, yeah. Yeah. Should we see the prototype um, now, do you think? Or... If, if there's time, um, just bear in mind, it's not like kind of anywhere near feature complete or, or developed. It's just like a rough idea at this point. Um, just wanted to get some feedback on it if you were to demo it kind of next month. Um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll share my screen. Uh, desktop two. All right. Uh, so you all see my screen? Yes. Um, so it looks quite a bit different to what we've got currently. Um, the idea behind it is to kind of cut down on the white space that we have on the build page or the project page, as we currently have kind of controls currently everywhere. Um, centralize kind of the controls aspects. You've got the kind of build with parameters option, configure, and kind of generic options that are not really thought of there. Um, kind of put the most kind of important information kind of center stage. So for this kind of project, we have the stage view plugin and that provides this kind of massive canvas so it can display all of its information. Um, and then instead of rather having the kind of sidebar links that we traditionally have, um, the contents of those pages is instead visible on the project page itself. So kind of rather than clicking through different pages, you can just scroll down to see different information, <clears throat> um, such as the test result trend or the stages, for example. Um, kind of nice thing is that it scales. So say if you have a really large monitor, you get more information. If you're on a phone, you kind of get a view suited towards your kind of form factor. Um, but that doesn't work. It's just a really hastily fine a prototype. <laughs> I love the concept behind it. What do you, what, do, what does everyone think? It certainly looks pretty. Um, I think the main problem is always going to be how do you get the plugins to fit in and to behave um, and go and like, do you provide areas for these sort of things? Do you make it configurable so people can choose what they want? Or, or is there like specific areas and sizes that they're, that they're allowed and they hook into? Because currently it's just a hot mess on a table. It's literally, <laughs> it's literally a table where plugins dump themselves in certain areas and break layouts. Like a certain plugin going somewhere can break the layout and do silly things. Um, so I, I, um, and how do you, I guess you have those or are these like key actions or something that appear there and if a plugin has a super key action they can put themselves there 
or just all actions appear in the little Hamburg menu? I think it was it was Radek that suggested back in the day that we kind of have it kind of customizable. Um, I think that was early. He's really ah, quite, sorry. quite keen on that. Um, but then that obviously adds lots of complexity, but I also kind of agree. Um, I think Jenkins as a service is quite complex, so you kind of need that fine grain control over, over what's visible. Yeah, I guess it's kind of a, yeah, it's, it's kind of letting you build your own dashboard sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I mean, for me, I think it should be sensible default and be nice if you can customize it in some way and plugins shouldn't just dump themselves on there just because they can. Uh, I think, I mean, this page is well due a overhaul. Um, it's it's a, a mess and the, yeah, the page structure doesn't lend it well to that with how it currently is. Um, like things like if you if you show like a before view on like some plugin on CI you can start so some build on CI you can say oh you'll probably see maybe fifteen side panel icons or something on that. Mm -hmm. I guess this this there's the run page and then there's the project page. Um, but yeah, if you click the master branch, so okay, you've got yeah. you've got ten you've got ten side panel icons, and then if you click, I think I was probably thinking of the next page down if you click the run page you'll get a ridiculous amount i would say maybe one that's already run um that's yeah there's a there you go um probably one that's already run will have even more i would say mm -hmm. cool. uh one they actually finished i mean next and previous are the easiest ones to kill off yeah. <laughs> there we go. There you go. <laughs> uh, so you're at <laughs> three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 23, 24. That's at a quick 25. This is at a quick count, and I could have missed some about 25. I mean, this is easy to clean up. Just fix warnings and G to have one side panel item instead of 10. Yeah. And get build data to not repeat itself for every build and so yeah. So anyway, the experiment or the demo that you showed looks great. It's actually fairly similar to uh what I suggested or meant to suggest recently when I asked about the build overview and or job overview page. Um Obviously, doubles in the details as usual, but this looks looks pretty good. And this is also the kind of magnitude of change that makes it where we can basically defend us breaking stuff. So, for example, the build history on the site there looks different than what the side panel widget would be, right? With the accompanying breaking changes around widgets and alignment and are we showing the description and on and on the problems that create regressions basically every time we touch it. So uh, we have a we have an opportunity here with this to completely rethink how that widget would work and throw out some of the accumulated garbage over the last decade or so. I hate that widget. Every time you try and debug that stupid widget, the HTML just changes constantly. It's r ridiculously hard to debug. Sweet. Um, I'm this kind of design carries through to the um, build page as well. Um, but I think the page is horrifically broken right now. So that's why I'm not really showed it. Um, but it has a similar concept where we kind of bring the side panel actions out. I don't care how broken it is, but showing an excerpt of the console output on the main page. Thank you. Thank you. This is long overdue. <laughs> 
Yeah. So yeah, just just kind of reduce the amount of clicks it takes. Essentially, um, it's just I've just broken this UI completely. Um, but yeah, um, that's it really. I, I can kind of develop it more if if there's kind of an appetite for it, and I'll hopefully have something. I'd say there's a more. huge appetite for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so pretty post on Gitter about it in that case, and I'll try and get some kind of more realistic data on there and to have a more realistic view of how kind of plugins can integrate and whatnot. Yeah. No, I'm sure. Yeah. That's yeah, that's the first time really. Yeah, it can certainly help with with this as well. Awesome. So I'll uh, I'll stop sharing in that case. Cheers. Cool. Um, okay, so thanks for that demo, Jan, that was great. Um, just in terms of the um, plugin manager page, just to loop back around, um, I thought it was worth just seeing that demo. Um, so I think the last bit we were at was it's not completely special because pages like the job page have it, the log recorder page um, could have it. And so Jan, I guess you showed how that different action bar, I think, was there still a title title on that page? Was it, was, like the, was it the build? Was it the project name? And then there was, you had the kind of different type of icons with a Hamburg for like extra things that didn't necessarily need to take up 10, 10 sidebar spaces. Pretty, pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Um, I can send a screenshot if Zoom supports that. Um, I think I'm it not does. Not sure if it does. Uh, don't know. Oh, I'll get that out. Uh, Let's me upload a file anyway. So this might be a really stupid question, but uh, why is the plugin title not above the search bar? Would that be so terrible? I think it'd just be down just by the vertical space. Um, if we have the space on the left, we could always take advantage of that, I guess, rather than trying to put more stuff on top. Right. But as, as far as I understand it, this is still an experiment, right? Mm -hmm. So we would probably want a feedback mechanism to exist before we publish it. <clears throat> yeah. Um... It could be a good prototype for whatever we propose for the on-page feedback. Perhaps. So I guess my, my suggestion would be perhaps we could do the following. Um, change it to move the title back to the main area where it unnecessarily takes up vertical space. Uh, change the update center to be called plugin manager. So it's just yet another page of the plugin manager that shows up as needed. Um, and remove the separator. That way, this kind of looks more like a classic page of Jenkins. We can basically postpone the discussion with the title in the side panel for now. Um, and uh, basically uh, resubmit that for review. And postpone the title in the side panel until we have a feedback mechanism because that kind of introduces a new way for the pages and Jenkins to look. Yeah, only kind of concern was safely advanced page. You'd end up having two titles for that page. You kind of have like plugins and below it, you'd have like advanced settings. At least on the, on the kind of redesigned yeah, we've so... got a big old title there. 
Yeah, because that one's like an actual regular page, whereas these ones are different. Mm -hmm. Or you could just change it on that page to just say advanced or plugin manager advanced mm -hmm. or plugins advanced. Yeah, that works. Would it make sense to split that page up into three separate pages? One is the proxy configuration, one is the plugin deployment, one is the update site source. Um, it's basically just a random grab bag of other options that are vaguely related to plugins. Uh, I'm, and I'm saying vaguely because uh, the proxy configuration isn't just for the plugin manager, but also affects the rest of Jenkins. So this might as well be in the global configuration for system options. So yeah. if this page is painful because of the title, that's because this page is stupid already and has always been stupid. That, that makes sense to me, yeah. Um, you could just call it configuration. Maybe. It's not even configuration though, because you can deploy stuff. So basically, this could be two separate pages for the plugin manager. One is the deploy plugin, one is the uh, update site sources. And the proxy configuration could be moved elsewhere. Um, obviously, you know, I might need to look into whether that makes sense structurally, but uh, I can see this happening. We've moved options around in the past. For example, the cloud configurations used to be part of the uh, system configuration. We had this label that they were moved. The tool configuration used to be part of the global configuration. Um, we can also move something back. And since the proxy configuration confusingly applies to more uh, or applies to more than just the plugin manager, having it here is actually confusing. Yeah. I so I, I think, I think um, that your pull request as suggested would be slightly awkward on this page is acceptable if we intend to split this up a page up afterwards anyway. Yeah, there's been, I mean, there's been talk of fixing this for years. So it's just getting it done at some point. I mean, the main thing is, I think just move the HTTP proxy at some point, but it's just figuring that out and getting rid of all the actions, yeah. If, for this PR, I think it would be fine just to change the title on this on this page. Right, splitting this up, I think, would be a separate follow up change. Yeah. Is, is that enough to go on, Jan? If some, something is an interim measure to get this over the line yeah it sounds good um so just to kind of clarify move the title above the search bar right and then kind of rename the update center kind of accordingly um right so the breadcrumb would also be plugin manager to basically make it appear as is it as if it is part of the plugin manager have the sidebars look identical between plugin manager and mm -hmm. uh, update sender and the side panel item for it could be download progress or something along those lines because really that's what it's used for right now it, it does nothing else And then the only thing that's kind of separate is it has a separate API, which I expect to be fairly little used. So that's not a huge deal, probably, hopefully. Um, and the other is the separate URL and who cares. 
so, so what, what what about the URL? Did you mean do we is, was it do we care that it's still under Update Center, or is it that you want this page to be served up under the Plugin Manager? It doesn't have a top level link. Yeah. So you always got there from the Plugin Manager, um, and it only exists uh, if you actually downloaded something. Um, and so that's why I think it makes sense to consider it part of the plugin manager. You take an action plugin manager and the update center becomes available, which is kind of dumb. So if you go back to plugin manager and just, you know, just install any of these updates, nobody cares, right? Just click any of the updates, say download now. Um, suddenly it exists, go back to plugin manager. And now you have the link to update center, right? And if you call this link, download progress, we're done here. Now go back to update center. The only thing that uh, you need to be careful of is in the breadcrumb bar, we would also want to call this plugin manager because we want it to appear as part of the plugin manager. And then I think the entire, we name this page, the title on this page as well to be download progress or whatever the side panel title would be for a bit of redundancy and, and, and we're through. I think that would make sense. Thoughts? Yeah. How, uh, how straightforward is kind of changing that breadcrumb to be plugin manager? It's the Probably display, just, it's just, the display yeah. name. So it's, ah, not, okay. it's not changing the link, it's just changing the text. The, mm -hmm. the link will still take you to that same page, but you've got the side panel, which you can use to get back. Awesome. That sounds good to me. Oh, cool. right. Good point. Well, this is stupid. Oh. Or do you uh, want that link to change, go to plugin center, plugin manager? Yeah, oh, oh, that would be nice, right? Because the label would be plugin manager, but it takes you to the download progress page. <laughs> uh, it's only, it's only going to be a problem when you're on that page. Right. Still kind of weird. But I mean, if you, if you, treat it as it's an actual page of plugin manager it's and so if when you're on when you're on plugin manager and you click it doesn't do anything it just takes you to the same page well to, technically it takes you to this because these are actually pages but if you click this it does nothing it'd be the same thing over here it's it's more like this should be a non-active breadcrumb which you can't actually click because it's a useless breadcrumb it would for it to do anything it would actually have to have sub pages here we, we might be able to hack the get URL to say plugin manager. And if nothing else breaks, we're good. <laughs> so yeah, so there might be some pain here uh, that we'll need to, uh, we'll need to see in implementation. And if you want, I can take a stab at this um, to see whether it even works. Sounds good to me. Okay, so later this week, maybe before the next meeting. Let's say before the next meeting. Yeah, I, I mean, I can probably do most of the small stuff and at least push something like tonight, tomorrow, or something. If you've got, unless unless you've got time, Jan. Um, yeah, I can definitely take a look at some of them. I just might need help with the kind of Java -y side of things because Jenkins Java confuses me. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, we'll see who gets to it first. Cool. Um, has anyone got anything else? Um, there's mention of an accessibility assessment here, but as far as I know, that was it was a, done by a company and it was in German, and I'm not sure if anything was done about that. Nope. Has anyone got anything else, or should we close the <clears> meeting? <throat> Okay. Cool. All right. Thanks everyone for your time. Cheers, everyone.